A very good morning. You are keeping it here on NBS Television. This is the breakfast meeting with myself, Jackie Mutesi. Now, earlier this year, the Ministry of ICT and National Guidance, together with the United Nations Development Program, started to develop Uganda's digital transformation roadmap. Now, according to Uganda's Grand Development Plan of Vision 2040, ICT provides an opportunity to improve national productivity by making both governments and business enterprises more efficient and competitive. Now, developed together with the United Nations, this program aims to develop complementary strategies that will accelerate our country's digital revolution. Joining me in studio to actually understand why we need ICT, why we need the digital transformation, is the resident representative of the United Nations UNDP program, Ms. Elsie Atafua, who will be joined later by the permanent, by the permanent secretary of ICT, Ms. Amina Zawede, to discuss. But a very good morning to you, Elsie. Lovely to have you in the studio. Well, thank you very much for the warm welcome, Jackie. Thank you for joining us. And I'm hoping you can help us understand why digital transformation matters here in Uganda. Well, thank you very much once again. But before I get started, let me uh, appreciate NBS for hosting us here, and especially you, uh, Jackie, and to our viewers who are watching. Uh, but importantly, let me extend uh, our sincere gratitude to the government of Uganda for the great leadership and pushing forward and promoting the digital transformation uh, roadmap, which is to be launched uh, tomorrow. So today we're having a conversation around it. Uh, but first of all, let's, uh, before I get into the question on why the digital transformation roadmap, why digitalization, what are the imperatives, uh, first of all, let me try to contextualize the conversation on what is digital. Because many a times when we talk digital, people think it's the Ministry of ICT. Uh, digital is all of us. And where we stand as UNDP, we define uh, digital as uh, the ever-evolving sort of technologies, whether it's on robotics, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, mobile technology. I brought my mobile phone here. And how these things impact on people and planet. And so that's the context. So it's going to be about everybody. It's going to be about trade, education, agriculture, health, uh, and many, many more. Uh, and so having said that as well, in terms of uh, the context, let me also talk about the fact that uh, setting principles, Jackie must guide what we do around digitalization, importantly, leaving no one behind, uh, making sure that it's gender inclusive, uh, the youth are included, uh, we go to the last mile, and that is human rights centered. In other words, we look also at the rights of people. But why? Why is it important? Let me talk about four or five things in the interest of time. Uh, first of all, the development imperatives. I think development has gone digital now, and then that's the uh, that's the reality. And therefore, when we look at the implementation of Uganda's Vision 2040, the NDP3, and, the, and by extension now we are going to NDP4 and the Sustainable Development Goals, it hinges around how we use digital technologies to be able to promote and advance and accelerate the Sustainable Development Goals. So for example, if you take the SDG number two on zero hunger, how are we going to use data-driven information to tell farmers, for example, that the rains are coming, so plant early or plant late? Or, or that the droughts are coming. How are we going to use technology to be able to inform food security, for example? You take SDG number three, uh, even on health. Uh, how are we going to use telehealth, uh, you know, health information system to be able to advance how we reach the last mile? And we can go on and on. So whether you go look at SDG number two, three, four, five, even on gender equality, 10 on inequalities, we will need to be able to look at how we will use digitalization to be able to advance the implementation of Uganda's development agenda. So that's the development imperatives. It's very important. The second reason why it's even now more than ever is uh, building resilience to crisis and shocks. I think if COVID revealed anything to us, COVID revealed the fault lines in terms of what hasn't been done right. Uh, one, of every, one of three children did not go to school as a result of the fact that they couldn't assess e-learning, for example. Uh, so, so, so that becomes very, very important uh, in terms of how, how we look at building resilience to crisis and shocks. Uh, during the COVID period, I think one of the things we did was that we, we bought the most Zoom licenses in the history of Zoom to promote e-governance. Uh, and so it's the lessons we've learned from COVID, whether it's from an education point of view, from the governance point of view, business continuity point of view, means that we have to make sure that there are systems, the tools in place that allows us to be able to respond in crisis and shocks. So that's very important. The third reason why it is important is that it is going to be about economic growth and competitiveness. Now, the world is changing. 
There has been a recent report that was done by McKinsey and Co. And uh, it says that the, the, the trade that is going to happen in the world by 2030, 150 billion is going to happen in the metaverse. In other words, we're going to be using virtual reality and other things to be able to trade. Now, how do you position a country like Uganda to become competitive when it comes to trade? And how are we going to use digital, uh, you know, digital, uh, digital technologies to be able to respond to that? So from an economic growth point of view, from a competitiveness point of view, we need to go digital. Uh, and when you look at that within the context of the Africa Free Trade Continental Area Agreement, for example, where African countries are saying we're going to trade amongst ourselves because Africa only trades 16.6% .6 amongst itself. Now, what does it mean for the Ugandan entrepreneur who needs to be able to send coffee or tea to Ghana or to Nigeria? You need to have a space where people understand what is in the market here. It's going to be digital technologies, and this is why we are working, for example, with the Ministry of Trade on a market intelligence platform that allows you to be able to see, mm, I can get milk from Uganda, I can get leather from Uganda. So that becomes very, very important. Now, the fourth thing that I wanted to talk about uh, very quickly, Jackie, is going to be around how we use digitalization to spur innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, again, going back to COVID, if COVID showed us anything, uh, we saw how young Ugandans, men and women, innovated like never before. Uh, and we tried new things that we have never tried before because of that. And therefore, how do we position young people? How do we position entrepreneurs? How do we spread innovation in, in a profound way that allows us to be able to encourage? And, and this is going to be a lot more about digital systems and tools. And I'm glad that we are doing quite some exciting things with young people. For example, uh, when we launched our Youth for Business facility, which was launched by His Excellency the President, we have encouraged about 50 startup companies that are doing amazing work. One of them, Akello Banka, is using digital platforms to reach over, over 100,000 farmers in the eastern part of the country. Okay, so, and this is not only about digitalization, this is also about jobs, and this is also about opportunities um, uh, for, 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 for farmers. Um, but maybe two quick things as, uh, as I talk about the imperatives uh, and why. One of the things that is very, going to be very important for us, and I think we are in an era of poly crisis. Uh, we have climate crisis, we have COVID, we have the war in Ukraine. And if you take climate, for example, it's uh, one of the most compelling um, development challenges of all times. And how is digitalization going to help push forward climate actions? Uh, uh, we're working, for example, with the National Forest Authority, and we have developed what we are calling the National Natural Resource Information System, which allows you to see in real time deforestation that is happening in the country. So then you're able to then say, okay, because deforestation is happening in this part of the country, what then can we do about it in terms of finding solutions? Uh, and so with the climate crisis, for example, that we need to respond to, Digitalization is one of the things that we are going to be using, whether or not it's going to be how we see in real time from space, what is it that we are depleting our wetland resources, our forest resources, and therefore what kind of actions, including tools that activists and young people are going to use online uh, to be able to. So, so, so the imperatives of, of the climate crisis and what we are able to do to respond to that becomes very important. And perhaps finally, it's going to be about the future of development. I think the future of development is going to be quite digital in many ways. Uh, I think before, before you graduate from Makerere, for example, if you're not lucky, artificial intelligence has taken over your job. And therefore, how do we position the young Ugandan, the young entrepreneur, the young artist to say, digitalization is here. Uh, and therefore, we need to be able to look into the future of development. Many countries, whether it's going to be China, South Korea, and many other countries, are investing heavily uh, in, uh, in digitalization because they're positioning themselves for the future of development, which is going to be based on digitalization in many ways. Like I said, it's not about Ministry of ICT. It's going to be about trade, it's going to be environment, it's going to be about you know, transport and, and many other things. And therefore, the future, as we set our eyes as Ugandans on the future of development, we need to be able to look at it uh, from a digital point of view. Having said that, I think we need to be quite conscious. Uh, digitalization is not a panacea. Um, to development, and I just wanted to put that into context as well. We need to be quite conscious in terms of making sure that uh, it is inclusive. We need to make sure that it is not you know, increasing the divide in terms of inequalities. 
and we need to make sure that it responds to the very things that uh, uh, we, we would like to see when it comes to Uganda's uh, development. So really exciting times for the world. Uh, and I think even for you as a media company, you know, you are also advancing the conversation using uh, digital means now. Uh, social media is a big thing for all of us and, uh, and uh, those tools are being used. At the same time, you also have to be conscious around setting vices that come with uh, digitalization, cyber security, for example, uh, cyber crime issues, um, disinformation, misinformation. Uh, and so whilst we look at the positives, we also have to be conscious about things that come with it and therefore make a conscious effort to be able to address that. So again, uh, we say we are in the fourth industrial revolution, uh, but in many ways, uh, uh, people think we are already in the fifth industrial revolution with everything that is happening around us. I don't know what's going to happen in the next five years. Perhaps we, we would not even be walking on the ground, perhaps we're flying now. Yeah. <laughs> One can only hope, Elsie. <laughs> but you're absolutely right when you say that different, different industries are embracing the digital transformation. Mm. And it's already here. Mm. Here at Next Media, mm. you can actually, we've embraced digital transformation. Mm. You can watch us from any part of the mm. world mm. using our Afro Mobile mm. app. Mm. So would it be fair to say that the ministry's goal, or that our goal as a country, mm. should be to use technology as a enabler, as a tool, and ensure that Ugandans, irrespective of their geographic location, have access access to services like healthcare, education, and employment, would that be the goal of the digital transformation? It has to be. It has to be because, I mean, first of all, we have to ask ourselves what is the transformation that we are seeking for Uganda? What is it that if we open our eyes, how do we reimagine Uganda in the next 5, 10 years? And therefore, if we reimagine Uganda in the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, then let's see how we position digitalization as one of those things. And it's very simple things, but very profound in many ways. Uh, my own mother is, uh, is diabetic. And, uh, and uh, when she's been here in Uganda, we just have to call Rocket Health and said, please, can you come and take you know, her statistics, check the you know, blood, blood sugar, sugar, everything, and it's done. So she gets to have a health uh, solution at home, but somebody else has been employed as well who has a job as a result of that. So once you're able to do those connections, that is not technology for just technology's sake. Technology to respond to a health need. Technology to create a job. So for the nurse who came to my house and provided that service, because of digitalization, he or she has a job. Rocket has a job. And there's a whole constituency around that. Okay, so, so we have to see it as a solution to things, an enabler to development. Um, same with education. Like I said, um, when COVID hit, one out of every three child did not go to school. We still have 2.9 billion people in the world who don't have connectivity. So you can talk digitalization and leave those people behind. And therefore, by positioning digital skilling, for example, by using e-learning tools, for example, we are able to reach the last mile and the many, many Ugandans that can get connected um, to education because of e-learning platform. If I take my own seven-year-old child uh, who is now doing, during his vacation, he's just been doing a lot of exercises uh, on uh, using e-tools, for example, in very simple terms. But you can see that he's accelerating his educational pathway as a result of that. So again, I would like to see this as uh, an enabler, but we have to create the conditions, Jackie. We have to create the conditions to allow people to engage in the digital revolution, but also in the fourth industrial revolution in many ways. And therefore, in the case of Uganda, we still have a lot of people who are not connected to the mobile phone, for example. Uh, the cost of uh, internet is still very still high, very high. Uh, which means that if we don't pay attention to the digital infrastructure, to the connectivity issues, um, to, um, to what enables people um, to be able to connect or even to trade using their phones. And I recall that when we did our partnership with Jumia during the uh, early days of the COVID where we said for the market woman in Nakawa or Kalewe uh, or, uh, who needs to trade online, what would enable that trade? And part of the thing that we did was to provide mobile phones um, to groups of women who would then receive a text or a call or a message to say, I want some banana matoke, I want some chicken, I want something you know, online. But we needed to provide that facility for them. And so 
the infrastructure to create some of these things and connections uh, to be able to provide the necessary tools and systems and provide incentives, including, including incentives that allow people to be able to buy this thing uh, at a cheaper uh, uh, cost or price uh, becomes very important. So in many ways, it has to be one that we look at from, uh, from, a, from a development point of view and digitalization as an enabler to development. As an enabler. Mm. Now that we understand the transformation that we seek, mm. LC, mm. let's talk about the goals of this digital transformation roadmap. What is it seeking to achieve here in Uganda? Well, first of all, like I said, you know, I want to thank the government of Uganda uh, for, um, for this work. It is uh, one that is part of development agenda of Uganda, is part of the Vision 2040, is part of the NDP 3, and of course, by extension now, the NDP 4. Uh, and for us in UNDP, uh, it's part of also our support to government uh, in many ways, and, and as part of the United Nations Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework, which we, which we work under as, as UNDP in the case of... Uh, uh, Uganda. What are we trying to achieve? What are we trying to achieve? And uh, I do hope that uh, tomorrow morning, uh, you know, viewers to connect again to the conversation online where we will unpack a lot more in terms of the roadmap and what we are trying to achieve. Uh, but let me mention a few things that we are trying to achieve. Uh, first of all, that we will use this space as a way of promoting digital scaling. That's going to be very important. Digital scaling is going to be important. Uh, but scaling for what? That's what we have to ask ourselves. It's going to be scaling for a number of things, for example. Uh, let's say if you take the case of entrepreneurs and, and businesses, we have just uh, concluded or we concluding a, a digital sort of uh, scaling program for, for SMEs, small and medium scale enterprises, so you can just go online on your phone and be able to say, uh, how do we do branding, for example? Uh, how do I ensure that my product is competitive? Uh, if I want a one-stop shop, uh, to help me, where do I go? Uh, so digital scaling in many forms becomes very important. Uh, E-learning platforms that, you know, whether the private sector, government and others will be able to, to enable becomes very important. So we hope that this room is one that will push forward uh, and advance the whole notion around scaling and digital scaling is going to be very important uh, as we move forward. But also uh, digital services. Digital services, we do hope that the roadmap will bring some more seriousness, consciousness around how we use, uh, we promote uh, uh, digital services, uh, meaning that we promote you know, effectiveness and efficiency when it comes to public service, for example, in public service delivery. What am I talking about? Take the justice system, for example. Uh, it's doing an amazing work, but we still have a lot of cases that have not been attended to. Uh, the case backlog is huge. Uh, and so how are you going to use digitalization to do that? And I'm glad to say that we are doing quite some amazing things. For example, we have uh, just concluded uh, uh, you know, an e-court, uh, an e-court in Masaka, an e-court in, uh, which is linked to the prison, uh, an e-court in Mbale. Uh, we have one in Mubende. Uh, and uh, uh, we do hope to launch one next week, uh, hopefully with the uh, Chief Justice uh, in Gulu. Now, what is it going to look like? So you don't have to transport a prisoner, for example, to come all the way to Gulu or to come all the way from the prison in Masaka to come. Uh, you can have a live court session because it's connected right um, to the prison and be able to do that. So for a judge who has many cases, for example, they can sit wherever they are and be able to provide you know, uh, services, judicial services, access, uh, access to justice uh, as a result of that through digital means. And we do hope that this will help with the case backlog, for example. So digital services becomes very important. Uh, uh, E-governance itself becomes very important. How do you ensure a business continues? So, so I think one of the things that the roadmap seeks to promote is digital services. In other words, how are we able to reach the last mile because we've gone digital? It's the same holds true when it comes to, for example, health. Uh, working with the Ministry of Health, uh, World Health Organization, and other partners, UNICEF and others, for example, the UN system, are we able to deploy uh, telemedicine to the last mile? And one of the exciting things that we did, Jackie, recently, which I thought I'll let viewers also uh, know about, is that we did partner uh, with one of the grantees we supported and to say, OK, we have a beautiful country, perhaps one of the most exciting spaces on earth. Um, 
um, and we have uh, the Renzoris to climb. It's one of the most beautiful mountain ranges in the world. Um, but when tourists go there, uh, and maybe something happens, or that you were in the rural part uh, doing hike and something happens, what do you do? Uh, so can we test an app that allows you to be able to connect and get health consultation you know, whilst you're hiking? Uh, and, and that's very exciting. So this is also health services in a different way. So uh, digitalization, digital services becomes very important. Um, uh, yesterday, the you know, Uganda World Life Authority and, and a number of partners uh, uh, launched uh, an app for gorillas. Uh, so if you don't come to Uganda to see gorillas, you should still be able to go into virtual reality form or the metaverse to be able to see our gorillas. And maybe that will inspire you to come. So, so digital services needs to be looked at in its very broad sense, uh, from government to civil society, private sector, and many, many more. What do we hope to achieve? We also do hope to achieve that this will encourage uh, and provide enabling conditions, uh, Jackie, for um, the uh, ecosystem uh, or the startup ecosystem. We have a lot of young businesses uh, uh, in Uganda. There are a lot of young people who are excited and are doing things. Uh, like I said, we have seen innovations like never before uh, post-COVID. Uh, the last time we launched what we are calling a youth idea thon. We said to young people, what are your ideas? What do you want to share? Uh, in less than three weeks, we had 4,000 people submit ideas. Okay. Now, how do we encourage all these startups? Uh, and how do we encourage an ecosystem around it? Uh, and, and the ecosystem is not only about the fact that you give a mobile phone to somebody, but you need to enable that, uh, the infrastructure, the systems in place. And, and so we do hope that you know, this roadmap enables that, encourages that. Uh, one of the things that we are doing, which is very exciting, which I wanted to talk about to Jackie, uh, for the first time we are launching, for example, as is UNDP with the government of Uganda, Makare Investi, and a number of public institutions, uh, what we're calling the Timbuktu Initiative. Now, uh, Makare would, for the first time uh, in its history, have an innovation port that has a maker space, a design space, a collaboration space, and a technology uh, transfer office. What does it mean? What we are trying to do in the context of the rollout of this roadmap as well is to make sure that when people or young students are graduating from university, it's no longer about they have a certificate. They should be able to prototype something. They should be able to design something. They should be able to get a 3D printer, which will be at Makere, to print whatever thing that they want to do. And that's an ecosystem that we are supporting. Uh, for the first time, we are also um, uh, setting up a business incubation center in Kabale University, for example, uh, which will cater for the, sort of the western part a bit. So when young people have innovations, where is that space to go and incubate your ideas. That's part of that ecosystem that I'm talking about. Uh, the National ICT Hub, uh, which the government has established, uh, it's a beautiful space. Uh, what we are trying to do is to refurbish, repurpose the place, um, and it's going to look great in terms of uh, having the tools in place, the systems in place where young ICT uh, uh, you know, entrepreneurs and innovators uh, can go in there and be able to. So, so that ecosystem, when it comes to the enabling conditions, um, the laws, uh, the systems, the incentives, we do hope that this roadmap will do that. Uh, the fourth thing, very quickly, is that we do hope that it will spur partnerships. Partnership within government, partnership uh, within private sector, partnership with young entrepreneurs, uh, partnership across board on something that is really exciting. And, and I think in, in the world that we live in, where I said that by the time you're coming out or investing, maybe artificial intelligence has taken over your job, uh, it's, it's one that we need to be able to encourage uh, uh, those partnerships. And perhaps two quick things um, is um, what we do hope to achieve is, uh, is to make sure that uh, this roadmap helps us to put the right digital infrastructure in place. Uh, and I, I do hope that uh, uh, P as award day uh, would be able to speak to some of these things in terms of in infrastructure, the connectivity, the incentives, and others that we have to put in place. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, that it will also ensure that we have um, uh, the right uh, systems uh, for to ensure cybersecurity and data protection, uh, because uh, there has to be a space 
uh, and the roadmap that tells us what to do and how we address issues of cybersecurity and data uh, protection, for example. So um, very exciting times in terms of uh, what we are hoping to achieve. But I think what we are hoping to achieve, to achieve as I conclude on this, Jackie and our viewers, yes. is, uh, is one that is uh, situated at a more strategic level. What we are hoping to achieve is to propel Uganda's uh, development uh, through this roadmap, uh, looking at different aspects of it, uh, whether it's going to be the scaling, the services, the infrastructure, uh, the uh, startup ecosystem, uh, the data protection, and many more. But really exciting times, and I can't wait uh, uh, to see the rollout and implementation of this uh, very exciting work that we are doing together. Absolutely. No, Elsie, I'm, I'm very, as a young Ugandan, I'm filled with confidence after listening to you talk about the future enabled by digital transformation. Well, joining us in studio is the Permanent Secretary who announced on Monday the launch of the Digital Transformation Roadmap that is happening on the 17th of August. It is Miss Amina Zawed, lovely to have you in studio. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning, our viewers out there. Now, Mr. Wede, I'm hoping you can tell us about the Digital Transformation Roadmap, but in particular, what is happening tomorrow, the 17th of August? Uh, tomorrow, I'm sure Elsie has painted a very good picture uh, on what is going to happen <coughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are launching uh, a roadmap that is going to guide our realization of uh, the Digital Uganda vision, as well as our national development plan. Uh, it's not that we didn't have, uh, you know, we, we didn't have a vision or what we are supposed to realize, but how to walk the journey. That is the roadmap. You know, we have road shows, uh, road drives for, you know, for entertainment, you the young people. But uh, this we time, for, <laughs> yeah, ask the young <laughs> exactly. people. <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah, this roadmap is going to guide us. We are going to walk the road in a structured manner, knowing, you know, what is at the end of a tunnel. What do we want to achieve along the way? And uh, the digital transformation roadmap that we are launching tomorrow is not only a ministry of ICT affair, it is the whole of government, the whole of this country. How do we want to move um, as we transform this country digitally? So it's speaking to the young people, it's speaking to the elderly, it's speaking to how government operates, it's speaking to how the private sector operates, the fintechs, the banking sector, how should we work together? How should we develop the right skills? So we have five main components of this pillar. We are looking at the infrastructure. If we need to digitalize or to transform, we need to have the right connectivity, the right devices, in smartphones uh, are in place, uh, handsets in the hands of our people. So um, that is the infrastructure pillar, looking at that. We have the scaling component because if we do digitize, we have the connectivity, we have services and everything. We have to have people who know how to use uh, these services online. So scaling is also very important and it's a, an important component of the roadmap. We, uh, the other component is the digital services. We are literally uh, driving the, the, and walking the talk of ensuring that we digitize operations. Cyber security is another thing. Today we see a lot of you know, fraud and uh, people are not tr uh, don't trust the services uh, online. So creating cyber security awareness, cyber security campaigns and putting in place measures that ensure that our systems are secure is one of them one of the pillars, and then innovation and <coughs> entrepreneurship. The young people are innovative, they have a lot of ideas, and we want to grow this ecosystem into an enterprising ecosystem, leveraging on ICT. And at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is to see people live a better life, leveraging on ICT, and also creating employment opportunities for our young people, leveraging on ICT. Absolutely. So tomorrow, that is what we are unveiling and launching the journey that we are all going to work together as a country. Thank you very much, Mr. Wendy. It was lovely for you powerful ladies to join me in the studio. I feel pretty powerful myself sitting in between you both. Well, the Digital Transformation Roadmap is set to be launched tomorrow at Serena Hotel, so you find out how you can take part. Ultimately, this is a roadmap to enable us to get better work, get better services, access institutions and organizations that we previously might have had difficulty in, 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 in 
in accessing but also, like Mr. Awede mentioned, security in this digital transformation journey is very important. We remind you to be very, very steady whilst you transact online under our Better Steady campaign. So remember, you be better. Have a lovely day. Keep it here in MBS. We have plenty more coming up on breakfast meetings. See ya.